All right, guys. Well, look at here. Got another project lined up for us. My buddy came into town. My buddy Milton. So, uh, what we're doing is we're going to be mounting a crane on his bed. So he's got a nice skid on there right now. And he brought the outriggers. Big old crane. Golly, that's a big, big crane. 6,000 pounder. That's a little jealous now. <laughs> but anyway, stick around. We'll see uh, some, some chopping and some welding and some cutting and some grinding and a whole lot of mess. Uh, outriggers are going to go out here. Um, he wants the crane to be inside there. So lots of underneath structure to strengthen up. He's going to be replacing this top deck lid. So we're going to be cutting it out to give us access. Lots of stuff to do. Busy, busy week. So uh, stick around. Pretty excited. This is going to be fun. All right, let's go. Okay, so now we got the skid off of the truck bed. One of the first things we need to do is, of course, unbolt uh, the bottom side of that uh, bed to where it's bolted to the frame. And on this side, unfortunately, it's welded on uh, right in there. But that's no step for a stepper. So uh, Milton's going to take care of that and, and take that off. We're going to remove the, the bed off of the truck itself. And that way we have more access to working underneath. And it turns out there's been a debate now on whether to center mount the crane or to leave it on the side. So that's still a toss up. Uh, it'll be dependent on what we find in there and how we're able to make the outriggers work. So uh, after we get this off, he's gonna, we're going to end up taking this skin off like I mentioned earlier. And it'll give us a more open view to what needs to be done and where we can put things. And then that way we can kind of start laying things out and planning things out for that crane base. So uh, let's get started. You may not catch too much of the unbolting process and the grinding, but we'll film a little bit more of the removal as we go. All right, let's do it. It was close. Yeah. You guys got the safety squints. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You get both sides already? This is, this is just the beginning of the first front end. I'm saying, uh, you cut both both sides already? Yeah, both angles are cut. Excellent. Okay, things are looking smooth. Maybe this is one time I won't get dirty. Look at that. You still clean. <laughs> Keep going. Still clean. Still clean. Oh yeah, mom's well, not gonna like you getting. Should Where put it? some cardboard down for you. Where is it? I get like tucked up in here. All right. Oh, let's see. Let's see. All right. I'm ready. Did you see your bed move a little bit? I didn't, I wasn't paying attention. Yep, yep, it flexed just a little bit. All right. Don't have the same problem? I can't get it. No, there's no work. There's no work. There you go. All right, what's left, the uh, fuel back, line? The back, uh, oh, there is no back here. Um, uh, the fuel line, uh, the fill up, and the lights. The lights are on? Yeah, well, the lights go through the bed. Okay. All right, let's get it.
Okay, so we got that all cut uh, cut free. Uh, they welded this backside with, like I mentioned earlier, and uh, those that's a flat bar bolted onto the sides. So now it's free. Got this loosened up. Got the tail lights loosened up. Uh, we may pull it a little bit forward so we can have access to the back with some jack stands or somehow somehow to lift it up and then we'll grab it from the front with my crane or somewhere where we can drive the truck straight out of here so things are looking good it's easy progress so far uh hard part is coming up Excellent, excellent. Got this taken off. <clears throat> so now next move is to cut all this off. We'll be cutting through here, all the welds. It seems like a lot of work, and it is a lot of work, but that's just part of it. So we'll have to get rid of that so we can make room for the new supports here. We're gonna change these out because those are way too thin for that kind of crane. And I'll make that a really tall rectangular tube that we can weld the bracings crossways that way another thing we're gonna have to do is make room for the outrigger uh, mounts so somewhere in that area we'll be able to cut across the back side of this box and actually this box is actually coming out as well so lots to chop up lots to uh, think about and fabricate so things are looking good so let's get to chopping Okay, things are making. Some, we're making some progress. Uh, it looks like we'll be able to access the, the spot welds and the tacks from the top side. Just cut around there, just a little bit to release this top decking plate. But things are looking really, really nicely going smooth. Same thing with around the perimeter. We'll find out where the tacks are. Just cut from the top down. So that is good. We're going to be doing away with this receiver here, when I mean, the gooseneck hitch, and we're going to get bigger tube uh, frame running tubes so that it, the lower half of this structure is very very strong we've already determined where the crane is going to go he decided to put the crane in the center instead of off to the side <coughs> similar to my truck so it's going to go in this general area here um, not necessarily over the front of the over the center of the axles axle 
but more so a little bit to the back. And then from there, we're gonna put the outriggers to the back as well. We may come up with a different design because those hydraulic outriggers are a little too tall and they will extend past the surface of this deck, which will create more of a working issue. issue. Can't get around them. So um, we'll just keep chewing away at it until we get all this cut up. And then at that point, we'll level up this bed. It's not level at all. We just put it on checks. <laughs> so let's keep going. Okay, now we're going to be continuing on finishing off the front half there and to find the welds underneath, I'm just feeling underneath here not to find where they stitch welded in different spots and what we'll do is we'll just come from the top and kind of aim the plasma cutter at an angle that way till we see the separation line and we know it'll come off and so I'm going around all the seamed areas uh, feeling the bottoms and marking a general area where to uh, cut it with the plasma cutter and so I'll just run my fingers up in here there's another one here mark that out there keep going mark it out mark it out and then that would be a lot easier to find when we're when we're trying to cut them off from the top side so <clears throat> again things are looking good um, we're making progress so let's keep going Alright, so things are looking really good. We got this all cleaned up. Well, mostly cleaned up. We can take care of some other little spots here. But this is all removed. And so that's that was quite a bit of a challenge. It's a lot, a lot of work. Um, today's a uh, go get the materials. So we'll be doing a little bit of a road trip. And then it's swapping this out into the shop. And um, starting to cut up a lot of steel. And starting to make it all happen so things are going to progress very quickly um, and so we're excited so let's uh let's keep moving forward and get after it let's go get that steel All right, so we got this thing in here. Didn't show too much of me or us rolling this thing, thing in here and getting it leveled. So uh, here it is. So now we're at the next stage. Of course, we gotta get these taken off. I mentioned that to you earlier, but things are looking good because now we have it, uh, we've leveled it all off. Now it's the time to build all the underneath structure. Uh, this box will come out. This brace will come out. We're gonna put some heavier tubes in this area uh, that way it's strong underneath and then of course naturally like any skirted bed it's just sheet metal so as long as we build the foundation strong enough it'll hold any crane it's going to be a bit deceiving because they're going to look at the bed manufacturer and say i didn't realize you guys made a made a crane bed they didn't we did 
<laughs> so things are gonna be moving pretty fast here got some tubes to cut tomorrow a little bit of cleanup little removal of that and that clean up the welds that kind of thing but i think we're doing very good so next step let's keep going all right so while he's doing that i'm going to be working on creating uh room here for some outriggers that we're going to manually slide out and we're going to use trailer jack and fortunately enough this has enough room right in here to tuck in here but what we have to do or what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut this section out this right in here and we're going to create a channel for it to be recessed in there that way you can manually slide these guys out and so Again, it's real, uh, it's real nice that we had just enough room to put that tube in there. We're going to be using a rectangle tube, a 3x6 by 3x8 as the outer sleeve, and then a 2x5 uh, tube on the inside that will attach to that jack, or to the jacks on each end. And that way you can just slide them out manually from here. So, uh, lots of chopping to do there as well, so let's lay that out and cut that up and You'll see what I'm doing. I'm gonna make, create a little box behind it. So that's next. Here we go. We can cut right along this edge here, mm -hmm. and then we'll keep clean that up with the with the uh, flat disc, and then we'll go ahead and weld that seam, and that'll buy us a lot of room because we're so limited. Is it three and five sixteenths? Right. So. That could be the edge of that side. And then we'll just have to create a little L like this to box in the other half. And that'll create some strength between here. Yeah. Right there. And at the bottom. Yeah, I like it. Okay, so now the trick would be to cut right up against that edge. Okay, we can do that with the uh, Saza. Just. Yeah, we'll have to look for me. We'll have to cut a line probably with a grinding disc and then keep, stick the sawzall in there and start cutting all the way down that way. And that'll be our, our first line. And then the second line will we'll measure out enough to clear the to clear that tube in the jack. It just might work. Okay. Professional guesswork. All right, let's do that then. Okay, so as with anything, uh, when you start making modifications to existing items, there are things that you have to work around that may not be exactly square or straight. And so that's what we're running into here. These boxes, these little toolboxes from side to side weren't put in exactly at the same spot on each side. So in order to clear that rectangle tube that's running in here, we have to adjust the difference in length from here to here and from here to here because our cross tube is going to run in this area right here and so it's no big deal you know we just make up for it a little bit you won't be able to see that and so next what we're going to do for the moment is install our runners our runners this way that will run on top of the rail and those runners they were initially three inch channel but now we swapped them over to some larger tube some some three by five by quarter 
those well, that's what's going to be running on top of the the truck frame and so we'll install these guys here at the truck frame width then we'll transfer these jacks over to that re-level it make sure it's nice and straight and then we can continue on with the outriggers in the back so that's next Yes, ma'am. Can't say no to that. All right, so we got that tucked underneath there, that uh, frame. And very similar to when guys uh, rebuild frames on cars, you rebuild this section here. That's what we did. Basically, we just built the frame out here and then slid it underneath the body of the bed, almost like they do for cars, like I mentioned. Then they just sit the old body on a new frame. So everything is all leveled up nice and straight, at least level. Now we're gonna have to adjust this gap right here to accept the tube that we're going to use for the outrigger in this area so everything is still loose we're going to measure and slide this back and forward forward and back you know sideways and stuff that way we can get it all centered back up this is the frame width the proper frame width of the truck so that looks good um, things are moving along uh, big things are fixing on happening uh, next next after we get this tacked up together We'll cut this old gooseneck box out and we're gonna support, make some big supports here with some three by three by quarter inch tubing. They're very similar to what I did on my truck. And then we'll be installing the one inch plate as the base for the crane. So things are looking really good. So let's keep going. All right, we're at this next step here. We determined how much room we needed to subtract in this area here for the top side or the body of the jack and then allowing some weld for the inner piece inner slide piece will be welded to the jack then the outer piece uh, the out outrigger frame or the tube itself uh, and so we total if that makes sense and so we total out to about four inches back so all that's going to tuck into here to this four inch mark we got the same number over there so now we determined our overall length of our outrigger body tube that will attach right here and attach over there and then we can glue these two pieces together so let's go ahead and cut that piece next all right so we got this cut this is the structure or the tube that will carry the outriggers in here the uh, other tube which we got here this is actually two by five by quarter inch wall and that is a three by six by three eighths wall. And it'll slide right under just like that. Now, um, my buddy here is wanting to make that a little bit tighter. So we're gonna try and see about putting a piece of, piece of eighth inch as a shim to shim it up a little bit since these are manual, make it a little tighter, slide them out. I believe these are gonna be 40 some inches in overall length each side. So they will be able to come out. I forget exactly maybe 30 inches I hope but uh, we'll see it's plenty for being the, a good enough distance away from the center of that crane especially for as big a crane as it is so this is looking really good so now once we get these marked up what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it on these little plates here and center it up side to side 
and we're gonna try and avoid this edge of this box right here so that's the tough part because we've got to avoid the back end of this box and the inside edge of the back side of the light housing so first it'd be best to put it in place and adjust everything else to it uh, if it's if it's off an eighth of an inch or, or so you're not going to notice it uh, especially going 60 miles an hour so it's going to be fine um, but other than that things are looking good so let's get this installed I don't know why Isaac takes such a heavy tube. <laughs> Me. Yeah, that looks great. Looks out of both. Somebody was telling me that that gun is too long and it sputters because of that, which stinks. Okay, so now that we got that tech together, that is now permanently a part of this. So we'll need to tack the front edge over there as well. That way it'll allow us to remove this section here. And it turns out, according to our measurements, we need to get rid of this guy. This guy and that guy. Oh, sorry, those three. These two, this guy. And then we'll put in our square tube, our heavier square tube as the crane base. So this is fixed. Now we can go to the front, tack that over there, start cutting these guys out. Okay, so we ran into a little bit of an issue here. It turns out that the way this lays out this way is that this tube is gonna hit right here where the fuel uh cap goes and so what we're going to do is to avoid that we're going to jump from a jumper from here across this way to that one to create strength for this here and then for the bed support we're going to go on the left hand side of this and just tie in here to create some stability on this area because he he does work on this side of the bed so uh, like i said earlier just anytime you work on something else you got to modify and, and adapt and that's what we're having to do here. So we're going to put a three inch square tube here as well, right in there to go over this opening and tie that. And that should do it. Then after that, after we get this tacked up, next step will be to cut this plate. It's a good size base plate, bigger than uh, what we're expecting. It's 32, roughly by 32. And the reason for that is this crane has a 28 foot reach. So that is a very, very far distance. And so the furthest we can make this base plate or the wider we can make the base plate the better and of course our attachment points to the truck as well so that way they won't have any warping in that sense we're going to put some supports under here to support that plate as well so uh, things are looking good so let's keep trucking that sounds great that's the sound going here and it's shooting off all the flat All right, so we got this piece cut up, and look at those cuts. <whistles> Good job, Milton. So anyway, so next step is to go ahead and put this in place. Uh, we're going to use these square tubes to hold it up, and I'm actually going to weld to it as well. So we cut it at a specific size. In this case, it was 32 by 32. And this one's tacked in place to be our zero reference mark. We'll come set the blade on here. We'll, we're going to tack these beforehand. Now we will have some area to weld here. And then this one will be slightly adjustable if in case it's slightly off. You know, I mean, within the 16th is fine, eighth inch. So that's our next step. Put that plate in here, get it all tacked up and get it welded. We're getting close, all right?
Excellent job. Uh, so we are moving forward rather quickly. Now things are falling together in place rather fast. So all this is tacked together, ready to go. Uh, here's that little offset that we had to do because of this hose that's going to come in here, the metal hose from the fuel fill neck. So we just tied into this. That'll work. All this extra stuff out of here is unnecessary as far as strength. More of the strength is involved in there. So we got it to this point. Now it's just a matter of welding this out and starting to work on these outrigger cutouts. These outrigger cutouts will be uh, more challenging than all of this, surprisingly. But things are looking really good. Uh, after that, we're going to put the decking material on the front halves. And he'll start welding all that while I continue uh, working on this here. So, very good. Very, very good. So, let's keep going. Nice work. As long as it doesn't fall off. I'm gonna fall in the front, is it? No. Less? No, won't fall. You want this higher? Got Milton over here welding away. So I put in some meat. Yeah. That plate is in there real nicely. <clears throat> A lot of support. It's gonna be it's gonna be pretty solid. So we're hoping to get this done welded up here in a little bit, next little bit, then we can start trimming these panels or the decking material. The decking material will come up to about here. Uh, we're gonna cut out some notches so that that base plate is exposed and that'll help us lay it out nicely and then we're going to work on these outrigger uh, cutouts next so lots to do and lots going on so let's keep going So we cut this opening up a little bit here uh, to make room for this jack. This jack is going to float in here and tuck away, tuck away in there. But now what we're going to have to do is we're going to seal this edge up. We're going to sand it off, seal this edge up with some weld. That'll be nice. And then here, what I will do is uh, box off this here. So that's a nice boxed in area and underneath in here so that it looks like it was purposely meant to be that way. Uh, similar with this up here. This is gonna tie into up here. We're gonna come up here and box all of this off. So when you have this deck piece on top of it, it looked like a nice recess, purpose built. Now one of the things we will have to do is add some plate of some sort to create some strength back there because now this end of the bumper is a little loose. Not loose, but a little um, compromised in a sense. So the strength that we add in here 
will definitely be plenty enough to hold it straight. You know, when you consider this is only 11 gauge material, it's the same thing. We're just moving it back there. So things are looking good. I'm gonna break out the poster board and kind of make some patterns and try and see if I can cut some sheet metal to fill in those gaps. And then this guy will be needing to be trimmed. This handle is gonna be trimmed. We're gonna weld a nut onto the end of that so we can use an air ratchet or an impact gun to speed up the process. Uh, also probably put a little D handle of sorts here so we can pull the outrigger out. So uh, this is one of the tougher of the things um, out of this whole bed, figuring out these little details. So let's keep going and uh, show you the next step. So I cut these pieces out. This is what's going to go in here. And that way to block that off. And this one here. It's underneath. To block that off. Right in there somewhere. So, looking good. Just uh, gotta keep at it. So, as soon as it gets done over there. I'm gonna go ahead and tack these up in place and be done with it. Then I can work on the other side. Okay, so it looks like we're getting those pieces tacked in there all right. Uh, that, those pieces there, box that in. I'm gonna put some welds all along here. Probably gonna flux core those welds there because we weren't able to reach the grinder and it'll remove the paint. Either that or we can burn it off with a torch. But either way, things are looking uh, all right for here. That tucks in really nicely. Right in this area here. Doesn't give much room for error, but it fits. So that's good. We'll end up capping this end off here, angling this out, capping that end off. I'm going to add a little strip right here that will cap this end off because you won't see much of it when the decking is on top of it like that. So it'll be recessed, recessed um, outriggers. So that's going to look really nice. Um, so now the other side. I started cutting on the other side and I need to finish it off. Let me get some little materials here to cover that area there and I think we're going to be in good shape. These these little corners here, we could probably add some silicone caulk or something to close up those ends. Or don't look at it. One of the two. <laughs> all right, I'll keep going. So we got this wrapped up, all well lit up now. So that's good. Now we're going to try and add the decking material here. We're going to be using a piece of 4x8 sheet, or three 4x8 sheets actually, of tread plate, uh, 316 stick. So I don't know why the customer wanted that but <laughs> no actually that's good i'm gonna be putting a lot of heavy stuff on here so that's good so we're gonna lay that out mark up mark out where the perimeters go and trim them up and start getting the front half welded because we're still making progress on these cutouts for the outriggers i ended up cutting this side over here yesterday you know, towards the end of the day and so we just need to box this in as well but other than that, things are looking really good. We're going to put a piece of angle iron here facing outward so it gives them a bit of a lip so we can clamp on some things there. And we're going to be making a uh, hidden uh, under this plate. We're going to be making a, some structure underneath for a vise. So we're trucking. 
we're moving along. So let's keep going. Nice job. So this is looking really good. I say that a lot because it is looking good. <laughs> uh, it's turning out really well actually, so it's nice. What we decided to do is to leave the plate exposed. <clears throat> That'll make it easier to lay out and easier to drill through. Mag drills don't like to stick on, on tread plate. So that'll be nice. And so now it's mostly a lot of welding from underneath. Everything's laying nice and flat. Everything's flat. Flat, flat here too. Looks really, really good. Really, really nice. So my friend here is gonna be busy doing a lot of welding, <clears throat> which will allow me to continue working on these guys right here. So this is the way the tube is gonna slide in, in and out of each other. And again, this is how that, it's gonna be welded directly onto that. I just got a customer show up and uh, you'll like this one. Let's go check it out. Look at that. Another one. All right. Well, now you know what I'll be doing next. <laughs> Let's get this unloaded.